Sorting materials for into groups. Lesson preview. Composition of things. Matter. What makes up matter? Properties of materials. States of matter. Are each of these things made of only one material? Discuss with your classmates. We see many different things around us. These objects vary in size, shape, color, and uses. What are they made of? We can divide different objects in various groups based on their features. This is called sorting. Let us have a look at things inside our school bags. We will find books. Pencil, pen, ruler, eraser, pencil case, box, lunch box, water bottle, etc. Composition of things. An eraser is made of rubber. A book is made of paper, ink and glue. A pen is made of plastic and ink. A pencil is made of wood, paint and graphite mixed with clay. Pencil lead. A ruler is made of wood slash plastic. A pencil case is made of plastic and paint. A lunch box is made of steel or plastic, and so on. Wood, paint, steel, plastic, and clay are examples of materials. Some objects are made of only one material while some of more than one material. The same thing can be made from different materials, e.g. a chair may be made of wood, plastic, metal, etc. We can observe from the tables above that objects are made of different materials. Some objects are made of a single material and some are made of many materials. A material can be used to make different objects and an object can be made of different materials. How is it decided which material should be used to make which object? To answer this question we need to know the properties of materials and use of the object. Matter all materials occupy space and have mass. Anything that occupies space and has mass is termed as matter. The amount of space something occupies is called its volume. A book occupies more volume than a pencil. The amount of matter in an object is known as its mass. It can be measured by a balance. Matter includes all substances which make up the universe. Parts of our body, bones, flesh, food we eat, clothes we wear, water we drink. Air we breathe are all matter. What does not constitute matter? Emotions, TV signals, computer software, sounds of birds are not matter, for they neither occupy space nor have mass. What makes up matter? Take a piece of chalk and break it into many smaller pieces. Take a small piece and break it again. Can you keep doing forever? Soon. You will have a very small piece of chalk which you cannot further break into smaller pieces. John Dalton, a 19th century scientist, named the smallest piece of any matter that cannot be further divided, atom. Hence, the smallest piece of iron or gold is an iron atom or gold atom. However, the smallest particle of chalk or water is not a chalk atom or water atom. This is so because chalk and water are made up of more than one kind of atoms. The smallest particle of water is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Similarly, the smallest particle of chalk is made up of one atom of calcium, one atom of carbon and three atoms of oxygen. These atoms join to form the smallest water or chalk particle called a molecule. Iron, gold, calcium, carbon, etc. whose smallest particle is an atom are called elements. Chalk, water, carbon dioxide, etc. whose smallest particle is a molecule are called compounds. Currently, scientists know of 118 different elements. 94 of these occur in nature while the rest have been created in laboratories by scientists. Millions of compounds can be made from the various combinations of these elements. Molecules of one compound are different from molecules of other compounds because they are made up of different atoms. That is why vinegar tastes sour, salt is salty, and sugar is sweet. Some common compounds and their composition are given below. Table 4.3 Elements and Compounds Compounds Elements that make up the compound Water Hydrogen Oxygen Common salt Sodium Chlorine Sugar Carbon Hydrogen Oxygen Sand Silicon Oxygen Chalk Calcium Carbon 
oxygen washing soda sodium carbon oxygen properties of materials different materials have different properties i e different features which distinguish them from one another these differences in properties help us to group different materials into different classes but remember there are two properties which are common to all materials all materials occupy space all materials have mass can you use paper slash cloth to make a bucket it would be silly as both paper and cloth will not be able to hold water buckets are usually made of plastic or metal steel we choose a material depending on its properties and the use of an object grouping of things having similar properties is called classification examples living and non living things natural and man made things solids and liquids etc classification helps us to study and compare the features of different materials easily let us study some of the properties of materials which help us to classify them appearance materials look different from one another plastic looks different from paper paper appears different from wood iron looks different from aluminium and so on there may be certain similarities between iron and aluminium which are not present in plastic we can thus classify materials on the basis of appearance luster luster is the ability of a material to shine metals like silver and gold have a shine whereas wood does not shine similarly synthetic clothes have a shine whereas woolen clothes do not shine it is generally seen that metals like aluminium iron copper silver and gold show luster wood and paper being non metals do not show luster some materials lose their shine and appear dull when exposed to air and moisture an iron rod appears dull but when it is rubbed with sandpaper the top layer gets removed and it appears lustrous therefore to see whether a material is lustrous or not we must observe a freshly cut surface of the material if the freshly cut surface is shiny then the material is lustrous materials can thus be divided on the basis of luster hardness different materials feel different when you touch them some are hard whereas some are soft which can be pressed easily some items like cotton sponge and wool which can be compressed easily are called soft materials items like iron stone etc cannot be compressed or pressed easily they are called hard materials activity scratch a candle a piece of wood a stone a plastic cup an eraser and an iron rod with an iron key we observe that materials which are soft can be scratched whereas materials having hard surfaces cannot be scratched surface of materials can be rough or smooth thus materials can be classified on the basis of their texture or hardness materials can be hard soft rough or smooth activity move your hand around petals of a flower a window pane a cup and a rock do you feel any difference you will feel that surfaces of petal window pane and cup are smooth whereas the surface of a rock is rough can you think of more surfaces which are rough some gases like oxygen are soluble in water plants and animals living in water breathe oxygen dissolved in water similarly plants living in water use carbon dioxide dissolved in water for photosynthesis however some gases like nitrogen are insoluble in water matter can be divided into categories on the basis of solubility density floating and sinking in activity 6 We have seen that salt and sugar dissolve in water whereas sand sinks into water and sawdust floats in water similarly a piece of metal when dropped in water sinks however a piece of wood or cork floats in water density is the mass per unit volume of a substance if we weigh equal volumes of wood metal iron and water it will be seen that iron is the heaviest and wood is the lightest thus substances like iron or sand which are denser than water sink into it whereas substances like wood cork and sawdust which are less dense than water float in it matter can thus be classified on the basis of density i e whether it floats or sinks into water 
transparency, we can see through some materials like glass, but we cannot see through a wooden door. This is because some materials like glass allow light to pass through them. On the basis of this property, materials can be classified into three categories transparent, opaque and translucent. Objects which allow light to pass through them are called transparent. We can see through such objects. Some examples of transparent materials are glass, water, air and some plastics. Materials like wood, metal, cardboard, etc. which do not allow light to pass through them are called opaque. We cannot see through these materials. Can you tell what is kept in a cardboard or a tin box without opening it? There are some materials through which we can see but not very clearly. They are called translucent. They allow light to pass through them partially. Some examples are frosted glass in bathroom windows, butter paper, tissue paper, etc. Activity Take a sheet of white paper. Look at a lighted bulb through it. Now spread a teaspoon of oil on one portion of the paper. Now look at a lighted bulb through the oil patch. Do you see any difference? You will see that the bulb appears clearly lighted than before. This is because the oily portion of paper has become translucent. We can thus classify materials on the basis of whether it is transparent, opaque or translucent. We have now seen that materials can be grouped on the basis of similarities or differences in their properties. We group materials to make our work easy at home and at school. In a kitchen, all the utensils are kept together, so are different spices and pulses. This makes it easier to find what we need. Similarly, a grocer keeps different varieties of soaps together, biscuits in one place and cold drinks and juices in another place. Such an arrangement makes it easy to locate various items when needed. States of Matter Most materials can be placed in one of the three groups, solid, liquid or gas. Solids have a definite shape and volume that do not easily change. Liquids do not have a definite shape but have a definite volume. The shape of liquids depends on the container in which they are kept. Gases easily change both their shape and volume. Gases can expand to fill a large container, or they can be squeezed into a smaller container. The molecules of a substance attract each other. The states of matter differ from each other because of the arrangement of their molecules. In solids, the attraction between the closely packed molecules is very strong. The positions of the molecules are fixed. They can only vibrate about their fixed positions. Thus, solids are rigid and hard as the molecules do not move away from each other. In liquids, the molecules are loosely packed. They do not attract each other as much as they attract in solids and their positions are not fixed. The molecules can move around within the liquid. So, liquids are not rigid in nature. In gases, the molecules are far apart from each other with negligible attraction between them. They move around independent of each other in full space around them. Therefore, gases have neither definite shape nor volume.